Alaikum. Welcome to Dil Narain's Tafsir series of the Quran. This is part two of Surah Al Ghashia. We completed part one, which was from ayah one to sixteen. Today we are continuing from ayah number seventeen. Something to pay attention to in the way that the surah is split is that ayah one to sixteen, the ayahs all ended with a similar rhyme pattern. Hal ataka hadithul ghashia. So they all ended in that light breath at the end. The ha sound at the end. Now, when we listen to this part, when the surah is taking a shift, there's a shift in the rhyme pattern and a shift in how the ayahs end. And there's a new pattern. So the surah shifts for us to now pay attention. We're going to begin with the recitation from ayah number 17 and see if you can hear the difference in the pattern a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim afala yanzuruna ila al-ibl kayfa khuliqat wa ila as-samaa'i kayfa rufi'at wa ila al-jibal kayfa nusibat wa ila al-ard kayfa sutihat فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَكَفَرْ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرْ إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ now we are being asked to look at our surroundings. So in the first part of the surah, we'll be reminded of the overwhelming event of the day when some faces will be really, really stressed and other faces will be really, really happy and pleased. And now we're coming back to this life and this earth. Again, to look at the signs around us and to think about what we see in the world around us that will remind us of the truth of the hereafter. So we start with ayah 17. أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Did they not look at the camel? How are they created? If you just ponder upon the creation upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even just the camel, the camel can survive in the desert for a long period of time. It can store water. It has a really tough stomach that can eat the rough foods of the desert. It can go on long, long journeys. It becomes a very loyal companion to whoever it travels with. The camel is an amazing creation, and humankind did nothing to design it that way. If you had to design a perfect companion for the desert, one that could store food, that doesn't get tired, that doesn't run out of gas soon, that stays with you, that knows the directions, the camel, you cannot design something better than the camel in that area. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the camel so perfect for our use and for the desert. But that's not it. In the next ayah, have you not looked at وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ Didn't you look at the sky? How is it raised? How is the sky so high? Why doesn't the sky fall down? Everything is so high above. What's keeping it up there? And then the next ayah, وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ And the mountains. How do they stand up so tall and so straight? Have you ever tried to build a tower with Lego or a tower with blocks? You can make it high and high and high and high. Eventually, it's going to fall down. Even the skyscrapers or even the big, big buildings. There's a height and it takes so much effort. Yet there's mountains that are higher than that. How are they there? How are they standing? So if we look up ahead at the sky and look around at the mountains, we should wonder, where did this come from? Who created it? And then look at the land around you in ayah number 20. Look at the earth. How is it spread out so perfectly? It's flat, wide. The earth is made suitable for you to walk on. How is this possible? Who did this? Where did this come from? So now that you've looked around at the world around you, these are enough reminders for us. For anybody who is thinking and looking at these signs, they will be reminded of the truth of the hereafter 
and reminded of the truth of Allah. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers some advice. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ So remind, especially to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who has been striving and struggling to remind the people of the Day of Judgment. And they're not believing him and instead they're making fun of him. But these people already have all the signs around them. We already have all the signs around them, around us. So then the duty of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and those who want to remind, it's just to remind. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ You are only there to remind them. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ You're not their controller. You're not there. You cannot control them. You cannot force them. You can just remind them to look at the reality of life and prepare for the next journey in the hereafter. In the next verse, إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَكَفَرْ but the person who turns away and disbelieves, Allah will deal with them. Allah will punish them with a great punishment. So you don't need to punish people when they don't listen to your reminder. You don't need to force them. If they have all the reminder and they have the truth, and they still turn away and pretend like it doesn't exist, then that's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will punish them with the greatest punishment. Because... In ayah number 25, إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا Because it's on upon Allah. Everybody is going to return to Allah. We're all returning to Allah anyway. So if you are on a struggling path of trying to remind people, then remember that your job is just to remind. You cannot force anybody. The world around us is enough of a reminder for us. So you guide people, you tell people a little bit, but then at the end of the day, the punishment and the reward is with Allah because we are all returning to Allah anyways. For the believers, for those people whose face will be lit up, this is a comfort. Yes, we are all turning to Allah. And for those who didn't do right, it's a warning. Hey, listen, if you don't fix your actions now, well, you're returning to Allah anyways. And, ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ Then indeed, it is on Allah to take the account. So you don't have to go around and say, oh, you did this good deed, you did this bad deed, so you're going to go to the fire. You did this good deed, so you're going to go to Jannah. That's not on to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of that. The account is with Allah. We just direct people to what is good, but the rest, the hisab is from is on Allah. So we end our session with this dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the destruction of the hellfire and give us an easy hisab on the Day of Judgment the day that will be really, really overwhelming. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us faces that are lit up and happy to see our reward. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.